Hey everybody, Karaoke here. Over the past couple months, I've had to come to terms with the fact that I didn't think I wanted to make YouTube videos anymore, and that was uh, that was a difficult thing, and I was all prepared to just shut it down and find something else to do with my life, and then ArenaNet gave us this patch. This wonderful patch that suddenly actually makes me care about Guild Wars 2 again. The game still has a long way to go to be perfect. Uh, it probably has a long way to go to even be great, but I at least feel like it's on the right track and it's good again, and I'd love to talk to you about the patch, some of my thoughts, and why I think that there's a little bit of hope now. Footage in the background is a hilariously bad dungeon run that I had. I was just trying to get some footage real quick and grabbed one guildie and a bunch of pugs, and we were very rusty and did some SE, so feel free to watch that and laugh. And thanks very much to the guys who ran with me who are letting me post this footage, even though it's pretty cringeworthy. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the patch, and uh, starting off, I want to talk about what I liked, what I thought is kind of maybe mixed, and what I think could be really bad. So first off, the stuff that's really good, oh, by the way, if you don't want to listen to everything, I will try to put a table of contents down in the description. If I forget or fuck that up, somebody do that in the comments for me to help out. So if you don't want to listen to everything, you can jump around, because this might go a little long. Uh, so first off, things that I thought were amazingly good uh, were the changes that they made to instanced content. So by this I mean the new dungeon reward system I think is really great. I think it puts some of that gold back. Uh, and In fact, if you look at it, there's ways that you might even be able to come ahead on gold, depending on the paths you run. Uh, and extra tokens are okay. I think that's, uh, you know, whatever. I don't really care that much about tokens. But the dungeon rewards are a great first step to getting people to doing dungeons again. I'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Other things that are good, the fractal dailies, the way that they change them are great. I've been advocating uh, pretty much this entire time for them to move to a system where each tier had three randomly chosen fractals that are fixed for people. So you don't let players choose what they want to do. You tell them what they have to do. Uh, because otherwise people will just do the easiest thing possible and they'll hate it. Uh, there's a little bit of paternalism in that. I think you do have to create the game and force people to do things they will enjoy. It sounds crazy having to force people to have fun, but that's how uh, game players often approach the game. I think the new dailies are a great mix of that. I wasn't expecting the thing where you can run a fractal at a higher scale and get credit for doing it at lower scales. That's incredible. Whoever thought about that at ArenaNet, whoever came up with it and implemented it, you have done a fantastic service for the community. The new Fractal Dailies are great, and we should all be excited to do them. In addition with Fractals is the updated Cliffside uh, map. I've gotten to do this once, and I thought it was really fun. I didn't do it at the highest level. I did it at like the, I don't know, it was like a 50-something or a 60-something. Uh, but uh, despite some of the encounters being a little bit uh, challenging and having to change up our strategy a bit just because of the amount of conditions that were being added to us from ads, uh, in general, I thought it was a lot of fun. I loved the new end boss fight. Uh, if anything, I thought it was maybe a little bit too easy, but it probably does fit in line with the rest of the fractals. So uh, very good changes to Cliffside, and that makes me really excited for the other changes they're going to be doing in the future. And of course, we got a whole bunch of quality of life, things like the ability to buy stuff in a big quantity, and supposedly an effects LOD that actually works, and those are great changes in my mind. Now, there's some other things that I think are a little bit mixed, or maybe I haven't fully made up my mind on them. Uh, the first of those is the automatic level to 80. I know that this is a really toxic thing because of WoW. I've never played WoW. I don't give a shit about WoW, so whatever. Um, but it looks like ArenaNet is giving people a little bit of an incentive to buy Heart of Thorns, uh, as well as, you know, a nice easy way to get a character up to 80. It doesn't really affect me, because all of the characters I care about uh, are already at 80, and I've got tons of scrolls and tomes sitting around, as does pretty much everybody I know who's been playing the game for a while. This is not really targeted at you, experienced player. This is more for newer players, maybe free-to-play players who'd like to try another character and, you know... This gives them an incentive to buy Heart of Thorns and then and then play with this little uh, buff. I'm okay with it. I don't I don't think it makes a huge difference one way or the other. Time will tell if there's anything really horrifically bad about it, um, but I think it's probably mostly okay. Now the one side note to that is it comes with a free account bound or a free account inventory slot thing where you can share stuff across all of your characters. For the vast majority of players, this is a wonderful, tremendous thing. It's a free 700 gem awesome item that does a couple things. It, uh, it'll inspire some players to go and buy more of those. They'll find one very useful and wish they had a second slot, and so they'll buy more, and so I think it's a good sales tactic. Of course, this bothers me because literally one week ago when they had a sale on these slots, I broke down. I thought they were always way too expensive, and I avoided buying them. 
uh, kind of as a, a little bit of a protest. Uh, maybe it's me being a little bit stubborn, but I think it's important that if you think something's too expensive, you not buy it to send the signal that, hey, this is not okay. Uh, so I hadn't bought any of them. Then a week ago, they had the sale and I broke down and I bought two, one for my salvage kit, one for my Mystic Forge node. And then I'm really OCD. So I like having all of my bag slots align and ha I have specialty bags. I use green bags, yellow bags, junk bags, and uh, craftsman's bags to keep all my stuff uh, automatically sorted in my inventory. And they're all 20 slot bags. So I run my inventory 10 wide and uh, I like everything to line up and it makes it a lot easier when I'm handling inventory. Uh, and so when I got the two new account slot bags, I went and I bought a whole bunch of 18 slot bags to go after them so that my all of my specialty bags would still be left aligned. So, you know, I, I spent, uh, what, it's like five, well, two and a half gold per character times eight or nine characters on the bags, plus all the stuff for the bag slots to get that set. Now they go and they dump a free uh, bag slot on my account, and all of my bags are off by one. So now I either have to buy a new account bound uh, inventory slot thing or new account sharing slot or just deal with my inventory as is. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do about that. But uh, I will mention this is something for people who are a little bit more OCD in the way that they manage their inventory. That's very frustrating that they just dumped this slot there and there's no way to say no or to get rid of it. Uh, people have asked me this on Reddit. You actually think it's a bad thing. And no, I, don't, I think it's great for everybody, just not for me. And I wish that the uh, instead of just putting it on our account, it was a consumable and I would not consume it. I would leave my inventory as is, at least until I thought that I wanted to buy more. And then if I bought additional slots, I could make sure to get them in some sort of quantity that I could true up and even up my inventory. Um, but, you know, that's not an everybody thing. That's just a weird me thing. And I understand that people are very upset with me for dare being upset that I got something for free. Whatever. Uh, suck a nut. I don't care. Uh, let's see. Next thing I want to talk about is world versus world alliances. This is another thing that I think is mixed. Um, I know that a lot of people think that the main problem in world versus world is that there aren't enough people. And I understand that feeling. Uh, I think there aren't enough people because the game mode has dried up and gotten stale. And if you made world versus world interesting, people would come back and then you would have people. So I think the fix for that is making world versus world interesting, not anything else. But ArenaNet has decided to do server mergers. Oh no, karaoke you say. They, they're not doing server mergers, they're doing alliances. Alliances are totally different from server mergers. Well, okay, they're definitely different in name and they work a little bit differently. Um, but in the end, I think they are functionally temporary server mergers. No. So how do alliances work? If you haven't heard, what's gonna happen is ArenaNet will pick a server for your server to be merged together with. They're not merged, but teamed up with. So in a match, instead of having something like server one versus server two versus server three, you're gonna have server one and two versus server three and four versus server five and six. Now they have said that not every server is going to get paired with somebody and that eventually it could have multiple servers uh, as in three or more servers, not just two. But it sounds like in NA, it's gonna be pairs the whole way. And in EU, there's gonna be some servers that don't get matched with anybody at all. Uh, I don't like this as a solution, mostly because I think that most players, um, it's good for them to be able to choose their community. So, for example, when I started the game, uh, I chose Sanctum of Rawl as my server. And I did that because I thought it was going to be a great community. I mostly did PvE, and Sanctum of Rawl was sort of anchored by Goshkia, which is a very, very large PvE guild. And back in the day, that that's really what mattered to me. Um, after mega servers, that became less important. And as a lot of things started to go wrong with Sanctum of Rawl's world versus world, I decided to find another community-oriented server that seemed to fit, that uh, that I didn't have to worry about the PvE side of things thanks to mega servers. And I moved my guild over to Northern Shiver Peaks, which has been our official home ever since, uh, and I've really enjoyed playing with all the guys on NSP. I think they're good people, and uh, I, I don't necessarily always agree with the strategy. I tend to be more of like a roaming and harassing people kind of guy, and uh, I think our server is probably a little bit more defense and PPT oriented than I am. But in general, I think it's been a good fit, and I've uh, I've liked being on the server. There are other servers that I don't necessarily get along with people on the server, and you know, part of that's cancer forums and all that. If you've ever seen me over there, I apologize for the uh, really bad PDF. I'm not good at being a dipshit. Uh, many of you are much better at it than I am. 
Uh, but so in general, I found that there are places where I just don't mesh with the people on that server, and that's fine, right? If Maguma wants to be Swaguma and act like a bunch of jackasses, that's fine. If you don't like them, don't be on the server. Find somewhere else. But it's entirely realistic now that my server could just get paired with Maguma, and then I'm on their side, whether I like it or not. Uh, and so that leads to problems, right? I, if I don't want to play with those people, then I have to transfer off of the server with the people that I do like. Now, making this somewhat worse, let's suppose that happens and NSP gets paired with Maguma and I have to deal with all those shitters. Uh, if I decide to transfer off NSP, maybe I go, you know what, I'd like to play with Darkhaven and uh, go meet up with my old pal Arius, right? Uh, I transfer over Darkhaven. Well, in three months, world versus world pairings will change. So all of a sudden, Maguma could get paired with Darkhaven. And fuck, I have to deal with these shitters yet again. So I think the alliance solution, it solves the problem of, hey, there's not enough people in this matchup, while creating a whole bunch of other problems uh, for different communities and for people who'd like to play with a certain type of player. I think for myself, it's terrible. Um, I see a lot of world versus worlders excited about it. And, you know, I think it remains to be seen how that works out. Uh, I think it could end up being a pairing by pairing thing. So some people will be very happy with their pairings and others will be not happy. Uh, so I'm curious to see where that one goes. And then the last one here that I want to talk about is uh, <laughs> balance, which kind of gets into world versus world, but definitely PvP. Honestly, I don't know what ArenaNet is doing with balance anymore. I really just don't know. I've tried to figure it out. I I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know what they're doing. I think a lot of other people are clueless. There are some things that are really strong that did not seem to get even slight nerfs. There's other things that got big changes that I don't really understand. Like, I don't understand why you made the staff Ellie fire auto attack 17% stronger. I, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. You know, I don't get why spam Condi Mesmer bullshit has uh, just been left alone. I don't know. So whatever it is that they are trying to do, whatever their goals are, I don't understand them and I don't see what they're doing. I'm interested to see how the meta shakes out. Uh, I mostly avoided playing PvP Season 1 because the meta looked absolutely terrible. Season 2 looked a little bit better, and so I did start playing it, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Season 3, it's going to remain to be seen. Uh, I want to see how everything shakes out. I played Scrapper all through Season 2, and I don't do much PvP, so I only made it to Ruby, but I had like a 75% win rate. So, you know, I, I think I probably, I definitely could have gotten to Diamond. I think I probably could have gotten to Legendary if I had really tried. I don't have that much time. Uh, season 3 might be the same thing. I might play up to, like, Ruby or maybe Diamond and C. Um, but after that, I just, I don't, I don't really feel like uh, the try-hard PvP thing. I think what I have to do is get in the habit of doing a few matches a day and leaving it at that. Um, but I'm really bad and a really intermittent PvP player. But I am very, very concerned about the balance. So that's a big open question. Uh so what I also wanted to kind of add in here is some stuff for the channel and what I think I want to do. Uh, I've been very down about the game, primarily because I think ArenaNet has, they've hurt the instanced content players and their ability to uh, find people, group easily, and play fun stuff. And the dungeon changes especially, I think, are going to help fix this. I think the fractal changes are pretty good, and hopefully the rewards will get better. And I think they're starting to do what I have wanted them to do all along, which is allow dungeons to be the place where you go and do relatively easy content. You know, with some, you have to press keys, right? But in general, it's going to be relatively easy. Uh, and you earn exotic gear for doing that. And then fractals, slightly more challenging content where you can earn Ascended gear, and hopefully the Ascended drop rates have increased enough that that's a little bit better, a little bit more reliable. And then, you know, once you have your Exotic gear, for, or your Ascended gear from Fractals, then great, I can go do raids. Uh, and the challenge increases at each of those levels as the quality of the drops uh, also increases. So I think they've started to get back to that spot, and I'm now at a point where I can see a path for me to go and take people who are in my guild. We tend to, I, or at least me, I tend to be very focused on trying to help players get better. So you are at this particular spot. Let's help you get a little bit better, improve a little bit, get slightly better gear, do something that you haven't been able to do before and get better. I now feel like there's a way for me to do that. For a little while there, with the dungeon nerf and with the way fractals were, uh, whenever you're training new people, 
you need a mix of experienced people who know the content and new people. And what was getting to be pretty hard was finding people who were experienced but wanted to help other people learn the content. So it had gotten to the point, like with fractals especially, people didn't want to teach somebody fractals, they just wanted fast clears. You weren't doing Swamp of the Mist because it was enjoyable, you were doing it to hope you got an ascended chest and just knock it out. I think we're back in a spot now where the content is going to be more fun, people will be more willing to help train others, and I think five-man content's great for this, because a lot of times you can have three people who are experienced, two who are new. If you're on voice comms, explaining it's pretty quick, and I, I now see a way that we can get enough people who are interested in doing this to do the content and have fun with it. In line with that, because I feel like it's something I can do in-game, it's also something I can start to do videos for again. So my uh, inspiration has struck again. I'm happy to now go and make more training videos and content for the channel. So uh, in the future, you guys will probably see more stuff. Uh, I think for a little bit, the channel is going to be heavily focused on getting started with dungeons and fractals. I'm going to probably redo the fractal guide that I made before. That thing's up to like 60,000 views, which is awesome. Uh, I might do one for dungeons as well, like a how to get started in dungeons. And then probably a bunch more of the 60 seconds videos that I've done focusing on basic skills. I notice people are really bad with things like uh, using stealth and uh, other basic tactics. So I'd like to create more little training videos for those. If you have ideas, please leave them in the comments or PM them to me or whisper them to me or get them to me somehow. Uh, because I'd love to go and start creating more videos to help people get better at instance content. So that's what you'll be seeing here on the channel in the future. I hope you guys enjoy it as it comes out. Obviously, uh, as I'm talking about this, I don't know exactly what part of the video you'll be seeing, but it's probably us dying and being terrible. I'm better at dungeons than the video behind seems to indicate. Uh, that was just a really quick, awkward dungeon run. Um, so excuse me for that. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out and uh, listening to all my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think. There's a bunch of stuff that I haven't talked about because I haven't really experienced it yet. So I haven't gone and done any of the open world maps to see those new reward structures. I am curious what you guys think about those. I am relatively unlikely to go into those, if I'm being honest. I haven't really enjoyed the hot maps and metas. I do need to grind out some more mastery points to finish my masteries because uh, I've been stuck for a long time just because I don't want to go get mastery points. Most of those for me are going to be adventures, which I've always tried to do and then been really frustrated that they're all locked. Um, but I'd love to know, do the new hot metas feel good? Do you feel like the rewards are better? Do you feel like the, uh, the overall effort required and the timers aren't quite as bad? I didn't think that was something that they could easily fix, uh, but I'm curious to see if people think that they did a good job. So let me know if you have any questions, ask them in the comments, and again, thanks everybody for sticking around. I know the channel's been pretty quiet. Hopefully I'll get back to making regular content here soon. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I'm excited about it, and I'm especially excited to see what they do with the next patch. If ArenaNet does go and they really do start to increase the amount of content in the game, I can see some of the folks who I've played with for a while coming back. Right now they don't seem very excited because again, it's still all the old same stuff. But new content, if it does come, I think will uh, bring a lot of lapsed players back into the fold, and then we'll have our friends back, which it would be amazing. Whew. So I feel like I just uh, yelled for like 19 minutes. That's it for me. Thanks, everybody, so much. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you all soon. Oh, Goodbye. Surprise.